Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to Accounting 1101, Principles of Financial Accounting. I'm Professor Martin. In our video right now, we're going to be giving a brief introduction on financial statements. Now, up to this point, you should have picked up a few things. Where we've been so far, we've talked about the accounting equation. We've talked about how assets equal liabilities plus equity. And we've given you a definition for every one of those elements of the accounting equation. We've also gone through and we've plugged transactions directly into the accounting equation to kind of show you how individual transactions impact the various elements of the accounting equation. We did that in our last video. We went through and we did all kinds of transactions and we found out that when we did all the transactions, our accounting system was still in balance. So we've recorded transactions into the accounting equation. We've totaled up the balances to verify that the accounting equation was still in balance. What I want to do right now in our video is kind of give you an idea as to where all of this is going. All right, we've kind of talked about transactions. We know we still have some work to do to make it more like real life and plugging transactions into actual accounts instead of the accounting equation. But before we get to that, I kind of want to show you where this is all leading. What's it look like down the road? At the end of the day, we're trying to compile financial statements. And I mentioned in one of our previous videos that the whole point of the role in accounting and business was to take the transactions, analyze them, and then summarize them, and then report on them. So this is kind of the reporting part. We report all the stuff that happened in the form of financial statements. Financial statements tell the story of what happened during the accounting period. All right, so financial statements are going to happen at the end of the period. For a big publicly traded company, that would be at the end of the quarter and at the end of the year. For a small business, we may be more interested in making financial statements monthly. So we can kind of follow what's going on uh, from a month to month basis in our company or in our business. So. Financial statements are going to come in four different flavors. We have four different statements that we're making, and we're going to make them in a very specific order. Uh, that way we can make sure that they're done correctly. First of all comes our income statement. Then we'll have a statement of equity. Then we'll have a balance sheet. And finally, we'll have a statement of cash flows. And those four statements put together are considered our required financial statements. And each one of those statements is going to tell us a different thing and give us a little piece of the puzzle. All very important and they all kind of work together to give us an idea of where the business is at and maybe where it's heading. So what I want to do in our video right now is we're going to break each one of these down and kind of tell you what the purpose is and kind of show you an example. And then later on, we'll talk about how to make them. So here we go. First of all, income statement. Here we can see our income statement for Net Solutions, our business we've been working on as an example. Our income statement is going to tell how much profit we made, or maybe if we didn't make a profit, how much loss we had. Hopefully we've made a profit. We don't want to be losing money in our business. How does it do that? Well, it's going to show revenues and it's going to show expenses for a specific time frame. In our example here, we can see we have for the month ended November 30th. So what we're looking at on that income statement is the entire month of November. Did we make a profit during the month of November? That bottom line right there tells us net income is profit or loss. So our income statement is going to take our revenue. It's going to subtract out expenses. And our bottom line is either going to be net income, yay, or net loss, boo. All right, we don't want to lose money here. We can see in November, Net Solutions made a profit of 3050 Revenue, fees earned. Expenses subtracted out gives me net income. So very simple example, but if we look at real life financial statements and we look at the real life income statement of a couple different companies, we can see that it follows kind of that same idea. Revenue minus expenses equals net income or a profit. Here we have Netflix revenues and then the expenses and net income there at the bottom. Revenues minus expenses gives me net income. We can see net income for Netflix in 2022 was 4.4 billion. 
You have a list that is 4,491,000, but that's in thousands. We need to add three zeros to it. So 4.4 billion in profit for Netflix in 2022. And they earned that off the back of $31.6 billion in revenues. And think about that for a second. What's a Netflix subscription cost? You know, 15, 17 bucks a month after taxes. You're talking $31 billion in revenue for the year. That's a lot of people subscribing to Netflix. Nike, you can see their income statement right here. Revenues of 46.7 billion. Again, that number is in million, so add six zeros to it. 46.7 billion, you can see their expenses right here. Demand creation expense, a fancy way of saying marketing expenses. And then down here we have net income. So Nike made a profit of $6 billion in 2022. Revenues minus expenses is net income. There's some other items in there. Uh, this is actually, both of these are what we call a multi-step income statement. So we'll talk about these different milestone numbers like gross profit, operating income, uh, income before taxes. We'll talk about that later on. But right now, what you need to take away, your income statement is basically revenue minus expenses equals net income. Well, maybe some other things sprinkled in there that we don't know about yet. But at the end of the day, that's all it is. The other thing I want to point out, you'll notice Netflix calls theirs a statement of operations. Nike calls theirs a statement of income. It's the exact same thing. All right. Uh, they're both income statements. You might see a little bit different labeling on that but as long as you revenues and expenses net income you know you're looking at the good old income statement after we make the income statement we can make a statement of owner's equity the statement of owner's equity is going to show us how the owner's claim to assets went up or went down during the period in our example we're talking about the period of november november 1 to november 30th the month ended november 30th 20Y3. Investments into the business and profits are going to add to equity. Draws, dividends, and losses are going to take away from equity. All right. And so we can see here, Chris Clark Capital, we began with no equity because the business hadn't started yet. Clark comes in, he adds 25,000. So we have an investment from the owner that's going to increase equity. We earned 3050 in net income and we withdrew or the owner withdrew 2000 and so we take all that we add in the net income to the investments we subtract out the draw we have an ending equity or capital balance of 26050 now our statement is called a statement of owner's equity in the example we're using because it is a proprietorship chris clark is the owner single proprietor if we were talking about a corporation We'd be talking about stockholder or shareholders equity and we'd be talking about common stock instead of capital okay so we have an individual capital account when it's just one owner or maybe a partnership might have two or three different capital accounts for every partner but when we're talking about a corporation that has lots of different owners then we'll be talking about common stock and we'll get into that later. And I just wanted to throw that out there in case you saw the term common stock or you see the term shareholders equity. It's the exact same idea, only keeping track of it for a corporation as opposed to a proprietor. There's our net income. There's our capital. So statement of equity. Here we have for Netflix the statement of stockholders equity. As I mentioned, sometimes you'll see it called the statement of shareholders equity. Again, it's showing how equity changed from one period to the next. You can see it kind of going up here from year to year and all the things that impact it mainly, in our case here for Netflix, net income being added in. All right. So the reason we make that income statement before we make the statement of equity is because we need that net income number. That net income number we see here is going to come from the income statement. Here for Netflix, we can see net income. Boop coming right down there and dropping into our statement of equity, our statement of shareholders equity. So for a real life corporation, a lot more involved than what we're looking at in our examples right now. But for now, all you need to know, simply that statement of equity is showing the changes in equity from beginning to the end of the accounting period. So what about the balance sheet? That's our third financial statement, the third one we make. 
The balance sheet is going to show the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. It tells us what the business owns, assets, and who has a claim to the assets, a creditor or the owner. And it's going to be shown at a specific point in time. The income statement, statement of equity, is going to cover a period of time, a month, a quarter. The balance sheet is done at a specific point in time. It's one date, November 30th. Here's what we own and who has a claim to it as of November 30th, as of this moment in time. It's not a period of time. It's that specific date in time. What we own, who has a claim to it as of that date. All right. We look at Netflix. They got a balance sheet. You better believe it. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. You can see their total assets right here. Liabilities and then equity. Add it up. Give us the exact same number. And that's what I love about accounting is because we're here in literally the fourth or fifth lecture video of the class. We're in chapter one. And what I'm showing you isn't some kind of watered down version of what really happens. It's not a thing where I teach you something and say, oh, but wait, in the real life, it's completely different. No, we are already to the point after a few lectures where you can pick up a financial statement from a publicly traded company like Netflix or Ford or John Deere or whoever. And you can look at it and start to understand what you're reading. I can pick up the balance sheet for Netflix and understand, hey, that's the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Now, granted, we may not know some of what these assets are. We may not know about short-term investments or current uh, content assets. We may not know about a uh, deferred revenue yet. We may not know about preferred stock yet. That's fine. We're going to get to it. But right now, just after a few lectures, you're starting to get an understanding of the way things work in the real world. And I think that's really cool. I don't like having to wait months to figure out something. I like to be able to figure it out really quick. And we're doing that right now. I'm impatient. I like to know stuff right now, not months down the road. Nike has a balance sheet as well. Again, assets equal liabilities plus equity. There's my total assets liabilities and equity right there you can see the liabilities you can see the equity and they're going to equal that's why they call it a balance sheet because it balances assets equal liabilities plus equity sometimes we name things and it just makes sense that's one of those scenarios right there the fourth financial statement statement of cash flows now the statement of cash flows is going to tell us how the cash balance went up or down during the period Okay, you can see right here, cash balance at the beginning of November, cash balance at the end of November. It quite literally is showing us dollars coming in, dollars going out. Where the dollars came from, how the dollars were spent. Cash flow statement is very important. We're not going to learn how to prepare one right now. We've got to learn a few things first, and we'll kind of learn about the statement of cash flows literally as far as how to prepare it at the very end of what we do. I'm talking about the end of the class, weeks down the road. For now, just be aware that we have a statement of cash flows, and it's going to show us how the cash balance on the balance sheet went from zero, in this case, to 5900 at the end of the month. All right, where the dollars came from, where the dollars went for the month of November. All right, there's Nike's statement of cash flows. You can see uh, they have operations, they have investing activities, they have financing activities. That's the three things a business can be involved in. Day-to-day -day operations, investing, financing operations. And down here at the bottom, you can see they went from $9.8 at the beginning of the year to $8.5 in cash at the end of the year. That statement tells us where all those dollars came from and where they went. All right. Takeaways. We have an income statement. Did we make a profit? How much of a profit did we make? That income statement is going to cover a period of time, whether it be a month, a quarter, a year, however we decide to make it and divide up that period of time. We also have a statement of equity that's going to show how the owners or stockholders claim changed over the period. Again, whether it be a month, quarter, or a year. We have a balance sheet. 
What did the business own and who had a claim to it? It's going to show you in report form the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. And it's going to show you that for a specific point in time, the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year. It's going to be based on one point in time, not a period. And then we have that mysterious statement of cash flows. How did the cash balance go up or down during the period? Again, yeah, it's a period of time report. It covers a month, a quarter, or a year. The other takeaway I want you to take away from our lecture right now is that the financial statements, even though there's four distinct different financial statements, they're connected. They're interrelated. And that's why we have to do them in a certain order. Well, what's the relationship here? Well, we start with the income statement. We make that to start off with because we need that net income number. That net income number is going to come down and appear on our statement of owner's equity or shareholder's equity if we're talking about a corporation. We use that to determine the ending balance of equity. In this case, Chris Clark Capital is our equity account. We need that number to come down to the balance sheet because we need to know that for the ending equity on the balance sheet in order to make our balance sheet balance. That cash number on the balance sheet is going to come down to the statement of cash flows. That's where we're going to end up on the statement of cash flows. So four financial statements, they're all connected. They're all related. They all tell us a little bit of different info, but they're kind of working together. All right, and that's why we need to do them in a certain order. Income statement, statement of equity, balance sheet, statement of cash flows. I didn't show you how to make them. We're just introducing them right now. Trust me, later on down the road, we're going to learn how to make the financial statements and you'll make so many of them that you will be sick of making them, I promise. But right now, we're just trying to get an idea about what the financial statements are, where we're going, and how to read them a little bit so we can kind of start to comprehend the information that's on them. We have completed our videos for the week. And I think there was like five of them this week. We'll come back next week and we'll start talking about accounts and rules for accounting and plugging transactions into accounts instead of the accounting equation. So a lot to cover there. And as you can see, again, one more little note there of how everything's connected here. You can see it laid out a little bit different there. But the idea, all the financial statements there are connected. If you're working on your homework and you have any issues, you need help, uh, getting a problem completed, you need help understanding a, con a concept on the homework or in a lecture video, hey, that's why I'm here. I'd be happy to hear from you and try to help. Reach out to me if you need anything, and we'll see if we can get you taken care of. Until next time, take care, everybody.